Hi, I'm Ultimate Zero One, and this is going to be a brief walkthrough of some of the more advanced features in Eschaton. Some of these aren't actually editing features, but are more display features, but they're still new, and I'm sure that you'll like some of them. So let's get straight to it. First one I'm going to show you is one that you should be familiar with if you've used Eschaton 0.6, it's the Scenario Editor. It's pretty much the exact same interface as before. The only difference is that now you have to load a tag, and where your scroll bars are is a little bit different. The reason for the load is because it's actually old code in a new application, so some of the things don't work together, so it has to do a lot of reading on its own, as opposed to using a lot of the pre-read values. That's why you always have to load it. Like if I was to switch to the meta editor and back, it would tell you to reload it. Um, as before, it's got the color as set here and then a complementary color for the spawn point. In this case, it's pink. And that spawn point there, I'll zoom in for those of you using YouTube's low quality version. There it is. Is that it? There it is. Alright, that is spawn point one for player spawns. As you can see here, edit it with these values to change where it exists. It has options for biped scenery, the vehicles, net game flags, all that stuff. Exactly the same interface as before. Should be used to it if you used 0.6. Another old timer coming back is the mod 2 models control. And again, it's exactly the same. This time though, it's embedded in the window. You don't have to press a button to load it. This one is view only. You can't edit anything involved in it, but it has the exact same controls. Model detail, or model data, submodels, bones, attachment points, it's all there, same as before. Interface has been moved around so that it actually fits in the window, but otherwise, same as before. Another one that you all should be familiar with is the Unicode String Editor. Same sort of interface again. You select it and you can edit it, and these are the types of messages that appear in-game. Useful to work with. Now this new feature I'm pretty excited about, Sounds. Uh, Alright, that's a good one. Uh, sounds have general data here. For example, this is in the AUG Vorbis format. Most of you are probably going to have to download the codec in order to be able to listen to these sounds. So, I already have that. It's not an issue for me right now. Sample rate, uh, it's stereo sound, pitch ranges. Um, sounds are grouped into different pitch ranges. Normally you only see one. These pitch ranges can slightly alter the way the sound actually sounds. You're not going to run into it too often. You're usually only going to have one pitch range. And then you got the permutations. Permutations are five second long sound clips in any format. In some cases, you'll see multiple permutations. And in some cases, those permutations will actually be parts of a larger sound, like songs, for example. So you have a 30 second song there. It's going to be made up of several five second clips all linked together. Or in the case of the death, it's a lot of unrelated permutations, and Halo will randomly pick what sound to use at any given time. Uh, if there's multiple permutations, there's the export all option. You can export to a folder. For this one, I'm just going to export a single permutation to the desktop and have a listen. Blue Team CTF. So that's exactly how it sounds in game. Very simple. Again, this is only a uh, viewing option. There's no import option right now. Eventually, I plan on dealing with that in a later version. But for now, you can listen to all the sounds. And I'm not going to deal with the tracks right now. So these are some of the new, more advanced features coming in Eschaton. Hope you enjoy them.